Good morning, folks. Looking back to yesterday's big solar flare, we're going to watch the umbral plasma from Iris here, a close-up. I also want to tip my hat to the ARRL who had their International DX phone contest during this blast and likely noticed the solar activity's effect. We're focusing on yesterday's news because we need a slight correction. Despite the position of the burst, the CME was nearly full halo. You see particles north and south of the sun, and if it sent them there, we might have some minor bits of the shock wave give Earth a glancing blow as well, should still be minor. Since the near X flare, the sun has dropped its activity back down once more. The sunspots incoming are still the entire show to be seen. Still got red negative out front, which is a sign of shifting magnetism on our star, but also note the delta potential north of the largest positive umbra. Red, blue, red, blue. Good interaction potential. Even without solar flares, activity at this sunspot group does continue. Multiple surface surges and minor ejecta events have indeed occurred, including one we don't get to see very well. As soon as the latest began surging, the SDO had its morning blackout as it went behind the earth briefly, losing sight of the sun. Every camera, flash, cut, residual field activity when we come back. Let's jump to the solar wind because we are seeing an end to that corona hole stream as speed and plasma temperature are falling. Electron flux recovering well, and so is Earth's magnetic shield. Dust it off. Of course, we do still have filaments. Largest ones are ahead and to the south of the dark coronal hole, which actually had an interesting day in and of itself. The coronal magnetic fields were all set to allow a full open field Earth-facing encounter between us and that opening. However, the northern fields built up and pinched the opening below, leaving us with a smaller coronal hole and less force to the solar wind exiting it. Top quake of the day did hit 6 magnitude in Panama before a pretty significant downgrade, Canada also taking another one above average in that same area out west. Top story today is that the most appealing exoplanet ever discovered, the one they later said didn't actually exist, actually does exist. The original studies were correct, the correction was wrong, this was a significant star water point hitting on the exosystem setup pattern and likelihood for habitability. We're coming to the Indian Ocean where a cyclone atop La Reunion is battering them for about the fifth time in the last year. Brutal water conditions there. In the United States, we see that same tropical moisture flow coming out of the Pacific and it is still meeting a similar flow out of the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. These combine for another day of major flood warnings in the south and that heat we mentioned last week is beginning to come north and actually bringing rain, not snow, to some areas up in Canada. Interesting note, that system dumping over Texas is the outward pushing end of a convergence that begins a couple thousand miles away in the North Atlantic. Precipitable water reveals all here. That system up there is indeed the top watch for Europe. Remnants of previous storms do remain, but that convergence, that's the kicker. Top story down in the West Pacific, tropical system forming here. We'll have to wait and see how this one develops. Calmer conditions to the south. We've got the current conditions globally. And shots of our star to close at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.